Are you suffering from hair loss? Hi, I'm Dr. Angeline Yong and welcome back to my channel. In this video below, we will talk about the varying forms of hormonal triggers for hair loss and how to target this respectively. To first understand how hair grows and what can cause disruption to it, it is first important to understand your hair cycle. Now, hair always grows in different phases or different cycles, namely energy, which is the growth cycle that can last anything from two to seven years on your scalp, and then also a transition phase known as catagen, where the hair follicle progressively detaches and is ready to be released, and finally telogen, which is the rest cycle where the hair is dormant and waiting to re-enter the next phase of energy again. Understanding that hair goes through cycles is important because it is normal to see hair strands on your brush. But when does it become abnormal? When does the amount look then abnormal that you should trigger you to seek help? So when you see an increase in shedding sometimes more than 80 to 100 strands of, of hair a day, that can be medically concerning. Now, it is important to understand then the varying factors that can cause disruption to different phases in your hair cycle and hence give rise to increased hair fall and increased basically shedding. Now, there are various hormones that can affect your hair cycle and we're going to go and cover maybe four of these main ones here. The first one and the most important one probably is androgen. So as we know, androgen does progressively cause miniaturization or shrinkage of our hair follicles. This is actually caused by the conversion of testosterone by 5-alpha reductase into dihydrotestosterone or DHT for short. It is DHT that's principally responsible for actually stimulating DHT receptors on your hair follicles to cause progressive shrinkage and miniaturization of your hair follicles and this happens in male patients and also in female patients especially those with androgen sensitivity or basically a higher basal level of androgens for example in polycystic ovarian syndrome where there can be excessive uh, male hormone production as well the second factor to understand is female hormones so basically both estrogen and progesterone are important in women and they actually support better hair growth so for example in pregnancy when estrogen and progesterone levels are at a high hair grows extremely well and you hardly have any hair fall during pregnancy and you're the most luscious abundant hair in your life however when you go through uh, postpartum changes and estrogen suddenly falls then you go through a phase of postpartum shedding where hair follicles now enter the telogen phase as well Thirdly, there is a very important metabolic hormone we know as thyroid. So thyroid hormones can actually be high or low, known as hyper or hypothyroidism respectively. And an imbalance in thyroid hormones can also trigger increased shedding and also basically affect the hair quality, making hair more brittle as well. Fourthly, the buzzword, stress hormone. So cortisol is also very vital to discuss in this topic because an increase in cortisol levels can also give rise to a greater push effect for hair follicles to enter telogen cycle. And hence, you see progressive increase in shedding because of increased stress hormone levels as well. So when your body goes through increased periods of stress that can be triggered by being physically ill or basically just from emotional or mental stress at work, that can give rise to increased shedding rate as well, known as telogen effluvium. So there you have it, various hormones can affect your hair cycle and disrupt your hair cycle at varying phases causing either an increase in miniaturization or change in the quality of the hair or it can also give rise to increased shedding rate. In the earlier segment, we talked about various hormones that are intricately involved in the homeostasis of hair follicle cycling. Now, what can you do that can cause aggravation of your hormones and give rise to increased hair loss? We talked about the importance of testosterone levels and how it negatively impacts on hair growth because it causes progressive miniaturization of hair follicles and the an androgen-driven miniaturization. Now, in women who gym or work out a lot, for example, like in professional athletes, for example, they do increase muscle mass, they do exercise a lot, and hence, they also build higher testosterone levels. This can sometimes manifest in the forms of irregular periods or missing the periods for months. And this can, of course, because of the increased plasma levels of testosterone, give rise to increased hair thinning as a result as well. As we talked about how important testosterone levels are in regards to hair loss, Estrogen and progesterone levels, as we mentioned earlier on, also play an intricate role in the hair follicle metabolism. So in women, the balance between this is very important. And if you have an imbalance such as PCOS, where you have higher androgen levels, taking a birth control pill that has an anti-androgen effect can actually be supportive 
and can actually help manage some of the hair loss symptoms as well. On the other hand, choosing a birth control option that actually gives rise to a hormone imbalance in the body may actually send the wrong signals to your hair follicles as well. So sometimes women may choose certain long-term options such as a hormone eluting IUD or intrauterine device or sometimes implantable birth control and this gives rise to constant levels of certain hormones and this may actually be sending a confusing signal to your hair follicle and cause a disruption in your hair follicle metabolism. So sometimes when we see patients who have had a recent change in birth control option and we deep dive into it, we then realize that some of the skin and hair symptoms actually derive soon after they made a switch in this kind of birth control options as well. It is first important to understand the cause of your hormonal hair loss. For example, if you're actually a woman experiencing postmenopausal hair loss because of a withdrawal in estrogen and progesterone, sometimes if you have other coexisting symptoms like hot flushes or mood changes, your gynecologist or endocrinologist may be able to prescribe you hormone replacement therapy for a period of time to help you cope with this withdrawal of hormones and this can help to alleviate some of the hair loss symptoms as well. On the other hand, if you have PCOS in a younger patient and there is androgen overproduction, then certain medications such as birth control pills with an anti-androgen like cyproterol acetate can be really helpful and not only regulating your periods but also helping to stem some of these progressive hair loss symptoms. In women like that also, starting an anti-androgen such as spironolactone may be also helpful. Spironolactone is an anti-androgen we typically prescribe mainly to women who have some of this androgen sensitivity or also in severe female pattern hair loss as well and this can help to block some of this androgen driven miniaturization. If you are a male patient for example, then sometimes taking a DHT blocker such as finasteride or even to testeride in topical or in oral formulations will be very helpful at blocking some of this hormonally driven miniaturization. Of course, while the purpose of this topic today is to talk about hormonal changes and its impact on hair loss, there are lifestyle modifications that we should not run away from and can be helpful as supporting overarching good hair growth. Firstly, good scalp health. So if you have a condition such as dandruff, like seborrheic dermatitis, using a good shampoo or antifungal shampoo like ketoconazole can be really helpful. Supporting good hair growth also starts from the scalp health as well. If the scalp is chronically inflamed, then hair growth will also be affected as a result. Secondly, choose a good hairstyle. Don't choose tight hairstyles or don't bun up or braid your hair too tight. This can give rise to traction alopecia and cause unnecessary stress on your hair bulbs and also cause increased shedding or hair loss as well. Thirdly, a good diet. Cannot, we cannot run away from that. So now remember that keratin is all about protein. This is all about hair growth. So important to note that hair growth actually stems from adequate good protein intake as well. So that can come in the form of animal and plant-based protein. Other than ensuring good protein intake, there are certain minerals that are also supportive and useful. Ensure that you have good levels of vitamin D, zinc, iron. These are all important basically for good hair growth and good hair strength as well. Finally, let's not forget about stress as well. Remember, we talked about cortisol levels negatively impacting hair growth and affecting hair follicle cycling rate, increasing the rate of shedding as well. So learning good techniques such as yoga, relaxation, adequate sleep is very important to managing stress levels. Lastly, be patient and set realistic expectations. Hair growth takes time and hair growth needs to be fostered over a period of time as well. You're not going to see immediate hair growth and whatever you start today, you may only see the effects or impact on weeks to months later. Unlike a skin rash or scalp conditions such as scalp dermatitis, you do not actually see visible results until at least one to two months in because hair follicle induction takes time. So whatever it is, be patient, work with your dermatologist or practitioner to ensure that you have good results and sustainable results. And this can sometimes require patience over a period of time of working together over months to even years to ensure basically that this is a sustainable result that you get as well. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.